Thanks for listening to our daily devotional. The lesson today is it's hopeless. Not. You know, the other day I was watching the news, something I try not to do. It's kind of discouraging, isn't it? To see everything going on. It seems like just city after city, country after country, they're almost in a contest to see who can be the most wicked, who can have the most evil going on. And you think about, you know, sometimes people say, I don't know why God doesn't just end it all. Why he doesn't, like in the days of Noah, say, I'm fed up. I'm going to destroy things. Well, of course, God said he would never do that again. The world will never be destroyed by water again. It will end one day, but not as people think. But you look and you find that God's desire, our desire, ought not to be to give up. You find in the book of Titus, as we read yesterday, Paul had left Titus on the Isle of Crete to set things in order. That is, make them what they ought to be. But you think about what that place was like. There in chapter 1 and verse 12, he says, One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Now that's pretty bad people. But what was God's desire then that Titus do? Destroy them? Get rid of them? Give up? No, if you look, he talks about how terrible these people were. They even professed to know God in verse 16, but their works denied him, of course. But you look, and the solution wasn't just to give up, to say it's hopeless. Instead, God gave his word. Titus 2 and verse 1 he said, speak the things that become sound doctrine. You know, God's word was given. It's the power of God unto salvation, Romans 1 and verse 16. It guides us in every aspect of life, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, 2 Peter 1 and verse 3. It guides our families, as we've seen, Ephesians the 6th chapter or 5th and 6th chapter. Everything we do is covered by the word, and we need to learn to trust it. Now, does that mean everybody's going to listen? No. Jesus said that the majority won't in Matthew 7, 13 and 14. But we need to be the ones that give them the opportunity. You look and you find that we, as we look at the world around about, we don't need to give up and despair. Rather, we need to say they need the word and speak the things that become sound doctrine. Teach them that there is something beyond here. In the book of Titus, the second chapter, he said that we're to be looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, what type of life do we live? Well, he'd said we're to speak the things that become sound doctrine. In verse 11 and following, he says that we weren't to live lives that were ungodly, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. We live soberly, righteously, and godly. And when people receive that word of God, obey it, become his children, they will, as we've read time and time again in Acts the second chapter, after being baptized for remission of sins, they will determine to continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That's God's solution. Now, there will come a time in which there will not be an opportunity. But as long as the sun shines down on this wicked and perverse generation, we need to look and strive to save ourselves and save others by speaking the things that become sound doctrine. Hopeless? No. Helpless? Only if we don't turn to God. And maybe you and I will be the only ones who will tell them how to do that. Thanks for listening, and you have a great day. Thank you again for joining us in this Bible study. We remind you, if you'd like to follow along in our daily Bible reading, the link below in the description of this video will give you the PDF so you can read right along with us. If you have any other questions or if you'd like information on a Bible study, contact us with the information provided on the screen before you.